In this lesson, we're gonna cover a cool driving rhythm that you can play finger style by yourself on the acoustic guitar. Let's get into it. Hey, John here with the Blues Guitar Institute, and this is your Tuesday Blues, where every single Tuesday I've got a cool, fresh new acoustic blues lesson coming at you, and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna dive into a driving piece in A, a 12 bar blues piece in A that you could play finger style. Let's jump right into it. This is gonna require a steady thumb with some, some driving bass. This thumb is gonna be creating that strong quarter note pulse throughout this entire thing. But the cool thing is we also play the rest of the rhythm figure kind of syncopated or on these on the eighth notes, on the upbeats, right? So like on the and of one, we kick this off with our E note on the fourth string and hammer up to the fourth fret. It's kind of coming from this idea, right? But we've got a more straight uh, beat happening here, one and two and three and four and, rather than a shuffle one and two and three and four and. But still we kind of make this thing bounce. And to me, it's all in the syncopation with the rest of these uh, lower notes, just like this one, and of one. We do that hammer on and then we're coming back down with the bass on the F sharp there. Then we roll through on the end of two and catch our A on the third string. Then we kind of finish it out and this provides somewhat of the structure for the entire piece. We come up here and do this sort of staple blues move. We get the, the D note third string, then hammer up. We'll talk about the timing in just a second, but we hammer up from five to six on the third string and land on this A fourth string, seventh fret. All right, so that hammer on, you heard it happens pretty quickly. It's two sixteenth notes followed by that eighth note. See how we're working in between that bass, that just that steady driving pulse there? move up, we want to be in between the notes, in between the bass beats with the thumb on that D note. But we start our couple of 16th notes here on the C as we pluck with the bass. Now I let that ring, but we're really doing it with a palm mute before coming down, finishing out that beat on the A. That's the main rhythm figure. And once you've got that, I mean, really lock into that. This thing is all about the groove. It's all about that driving beat and making sure that you can get all this stuff to kind of lock in together. And feel free to practice this a lot slower than this. It feels good up to tempo, but definitely practice it a lot slower. You want to make sure that you get the notes to fall in the correct timing and they're in their slot. Like you've got to slot these things in where they go. Um, so definitely dial back the tempo, get it down. And once you've got that piece, just that one bar piece, the whole thing becomes a whole lot easier. There's some tricky bits we're gonna get to, no doubt about it, but this to me forms the basis, kind of the bedrock that we're gonna build the rest of this progression on. And case in point is bar two. It's much the same as bar one. All we're gonna do is come up to the seventh fret what we do the first time around but the second time around we don't go back to the A we let that C sharp hang sounds really good so those two definitely fit together and they kind of complete a little bit of a musical thought we're still we still got some more work to do and we're going to go back to that first statement that we made here 
So that's bar three. For bar four, we've got to start thinking about how we're going to lead into the four chord, the next chord in a 12 bar blues progression, in our case, uh, a D chord. All right. So what we're going to do, start out the same on the end of three. One, two, three, and slide in. Or actually hit the solid and slide back for the fourth beat. All right, so hit these two stop, solid, this double stop, really just part of an A major triad there, but you may wanna play it with this finger uh, group here, pair, then slide back down. That's on the four beat, and then back down again for the end of four. And you don't let that bass ring. I just wanted you to know that I'm hitting that all along. I want you to know where it falls. But we're coming to this on the end of three. So end of three, four, and now we're into our D chord. And all we're going to do to really kind of continue this pattern is lift this finger up. That's why I like doing it with the ring and middle finger because it really sets me up nicely for this position with my D. And over the D, we're going to shift the bass to the fourth string and have it kind of pumping out. This is a lighter string and not something that you typically get to groove on a lot because it's, it's open. It's a little high in pitch. Generally, in a lot of the stuff that we cover here on uh, Tuesday Blues, we go for this F sharp in the bass over a D. But you can use this um, fourth string open with a thumb bass, just like you would the sixth string or the fifth string. Okay, and we're doing that here. And what we're going to do is kind of continue that sort of pattern that we laid out in A, but now we're going to do it in D. It kind of to me, makes us sound like we're playing the same piece of music. We're not going off in a totally different direction here for this set of 12 bars. That doesn't mean that you can't develop this once you get past this first 12 bar course. You definitely can and go in a totally different direction, but the 12 bars really need to sit together and, and just play nicely with each other. All right, uh, I hope that makes sense to you, but let's, let's continue here. So what we're gonna do when we get down here, basically the same thing, except that we're not holding this shape and going back to the second fret, we're doing this with respect to our D chord here. So we're hitting the bass on the end of one, we're doing that hammer on from the second to fourth fret, but this time on the third string. And when we land that hammer, we've got the open fourth string. And then, uh, on the end of two, you hit the D note on the second string, third fret. Okay, beat three. Beat four, or end of three actually, is here. So you can kind of flatten out and catch that G on the third fret, first string. All right, and then we've got a cool little move. We're gonna sneak back here to the first fret and slide into the second fret. Kind of mirrors this thing. And really, it's the same intervals when you think about it compared to the D chord. A, it was our five, or sorry, our four, <laughs> and we're hammering up from the minor third to the major third. If you think about D, G is gonna be your fourth, then we're going minor third, major third. All right, so there's some parallel harmony happening there, or, or melody happening there. Same rhythm. We're really just applying that same idea, but over a different chord. All right, then we do it again. And we finish off by kind of getting out of that position and sliding up to the seventh fret. So that's our D note. And then hitting the F sharp here on the second string, seventh fret. going to catch that F sharp along with the bass on beat four. All right, 
And when you get there, feel free to apply some vibrato on that pair of notes. All right, but then we're going back to our A part. All right, but right here, we want to lead now, instead of into a D chord, we want to lead into our five chord E, okay? And where we're going is right here, this E7 voicing, all right? So there's my E, there's the root, and then I've got this little shape here. It's kind of like a little triangle shape here. Um, and it's basically the D7 shape that you may already know, but you just move it up into E. Now, it helps to refinger with the middle ring and little finger so that you can play that bass. It's a handy chord shape to know. All right, I really want you to get to know that one if you don't already, but this is it. This is where we're going, but we want to, we want to get there, right? So what we're going to do, it's kind of that same move we did before. We're going to go to this little piece of an A major triad, but I want you to go ahead and put your finger on the fourth string, as if you've got this little uh, D shape here. And then we're gonna slide. When we get there, we're gonna thump the fourth fret, fourth string for the bass. As these strings, kind of drag them with you, right? We want it to still ring. Then back again, catch the uh, second and the third string there. And then get in position for our uh, five chord here, this, this chord, this target chord where we're going. All right. And once we're into that chord, we're gonna basically roll through and arpeggiate it. So that just means broken chord. We're gonna play the notes of the chord melodically. All right, so just fourth, third, second, first string there. Then um, we're gonna kind of syncopate this little bass walk down. So we've got that little rest in there. It feels really good, it feels kind of funky, right? arpeggiate our D chord. We're at that part of the progression where we're doing that, that real important five chord to four chord move, all right? And we're gonna have some parity there. I really like tying things together when you're composing, when you're putting something together. And this could be a good takeaway for you is that this and that they fit, they go together. We didn't change the rhythm. We didn't really change the, the contour of the melody there. That's why that little piece sounds like it fits together. And now we're gonna call back to somewhere we've already been. After we arpeggiate through our D chord, we're gonna do that slide up to the seventh fret. Hit that D, hit that F sharp, and then back to our Okay. Already been there. And then to wrap it up, we're going to uh, start out with our A. This is bar 12. And in bar 12, you typically hear some sort of element um, that, that lets you know that you're done with the progression. That could start earlier and, and be a full, you know, turnaround you know, or something like that. But what we're gonna do here is just kind of keep it low key and right at the very end, we're gonna slip into a big E major chord, that big five chord. So we start out the bar, just like all of these bars in A really. But here for beat three, notice my bass shifted to the sixth string. So that's the first little hint of where we're going. And then I'm gonna jump into position for an E major. You could do an E seven, but I like this E major here. And I'm gonna brush up through the top four or so strings and then come down um, with some heavy attack with the thumb, push through at least the bottom two, but catch a few more on the way if it feels good. But we're doing this and then kind of choking out for an eighth note rest there. Just kind of lets us know that we're done with this progression and we're ready to start over.
All right, before we play this all together again as kind of a review, I wanna let you know that I've got the tab prepared for you and you can download it. These are normally for premium members only, but this one I wanna give away. I wanna get it into your hands because this could be a really cool piece for you to work on. There's a lot going on here. It's got that driving beat. So it could be something cool to put in your finger style arsenal. And I'm hoping you'll take me up on that and download this tab. All right, let's play through this thing one more time as a complete 12 bar package so that you can see these pieces kind of working together now that we've kind of blown it apart and looked at the little bits and pieces. All right, here we go. I hope you dig this lesson. If you do, be sure to hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Sure helps the channel out here on YouTube and gets these lessons into the hands of more blues pickers like yourself. Be sure to grab that tab and come on back here next Tuesday for another cool acoustic blues lesson. Until then, practice smart and play on.